One thing that we've been tracking on NDTV Profit is how the there's been a shift, a kind of a thematic shift in the way in which valuations are done nowadays. From PNL statements, looking at uh, just earnings, people have started looking at balance sheets, looking at debt, looking at cash flows. And that is why understanding balance sheets has become important. But as I said, that for most of us, it uh, looks like it's Greek. It's written in Greek. It is Greek. It's difficult to understand. Uh, for that, I've got in one of NDTV's in-house finance wizards, and that's uh, Ritika Jain joins us right now. Thank you so much, Ritika, for coming in. You know, balance sheet, difficult to understand. As soon as, unless you've done accounting, and uh, uh, many of us haven't, you suddenly see, oh, what, what is this? What is written down? And you switch off. But it's not that tough, right? So, which is why I want you to take us through a starting point. We're going to do a series, a dummies guide. What is a balance sheet? So, uh, before we actually do what is a balance sheet, I just want to say that accounts is actually a language of a business through which mm. we communicate that what is the financial performance of a company is at a given, given point of time. Mm. And these are actually done through the financial reports, uh, which we all popularly uh, known as financial statements. Mm. So, the three prime financial statements to start with first is the balance sheet, which mm. is actually a statement of position at mm. any given point of time. Then you have a statement of performance of a company, which is actually done by a PL statement, also mm. known as income statement. Which is the flow. Which is the flow. It's like, it's like saying that I have so much wealth in my bank, that is a balance sheet, and I have borrowed so much, but the flow is the yeah, uh, yeah. income tax return that I. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. mm. And uh, then uh, basically, we also have the cash flow statement, which is also mm. very crucial because mm. I, it actually tells you that how the cash is flowing, how the money mm. is coming in, and how the mm. money is going out mm. through the year. So, uh, basically, uh, coming back to the balance sheet, uh, I mean, I know that, you know, all the financial statements of a company, it's, it has massive amount of data and I can understand mm. that it can be intimidating for any non-finance right. person. Uh -huh. So, uh, I just want to say, if I take a simple example that, mm. you know, going away from the financial statements, mm. we actually have a balance sheet in our day-to-day -day life. So, if I just quote one example, for example, right. mm. we need to buy a house. Mm. So, for instance, if I today decide that I need to buy a house, I obviously mm. would have some capital in my right. hand to go buy a house. Mm. But then, obviously, it won't be sufficient to go buy a house. So, I approach mm. a bank and mm. thankfully, bank mm. agrees to give me a loan. Mm. So, I actually club my funds and mm. the bank's funds and yeah. I actually go and buy a house. Yeah. So, the money that I actually put in from mm. my own capital is mm. nothing but the equity. Okay. The money that I actually borrow from a bank, obviously with the interest rates mm. involved, because mm. and it's a loan because it has to be repaid at some point mm. of time, mm. it's nothing but a liability. Mm. And the usage of that fund that I actually do, I deploy that funds to go buy something which mm. is nothing but an asset. Okay, so, that, so that's, the house is the asset and the money that I spent on it is part equity, which is my own right. money, the cash down sometimes, and the year buys that I'm putting in is the liability part right, all right absolutely okay. mm. so i think if i just if we just use the three financial mm. crucial elements in a balance mm. sheet which we actually is nothing but we actually use mm. them in our day-to-day -day life mm. we can actually understand any normal financial statement i know mm. going by the difficult ta technical jargons but mm. these are the three pr preliminary elements of a balance sheet that mm. and uh, the, that's how the accounting equation also is that mm. you know we have uh, liabilities plus the equity that the owner puts in and mm. where he actually invests that funds basically mm. either to deploy in terms of the operations of a company or the fixed assets that's mm. where it equates to mm. so that's why all of them so balances. generally the difference between a consumer I know that an asset it can be productive and a business would be that they think to grow right yeah. and I might buy a house to stay in it. Right. So I consume it and they would actually be putting it in to grow. Right. So that would be the kind of difference. Exactly. So yeah. that's a basic difference yeah. that they're uh -huh. actually putting or investing. In fact, that's why the investors are investing in the money because mm. they see there's a future potential mm. in a mm. company to grow. So you actually deploy that funds to grow a company in a mm. certain way. Mm. Okay. Um, now take us through that. I know you said assets and uh, I'm going to take all of these First, simply, so just take us through what an asset, liability and uh, equity is. You did mention it, but a little bit. And then a little bit in more detail, right. all of them. Right. Uh, so if I just pick up the asset to start mm. with. So asset is nothing but anything which is tangible or intangible. When I say tangible or intangible, it can be a physical use mm. or it cannot be seen physically. And something mm. which can be actually used to productive use, which has an economic value. Mm. One thing which I want to Give me, a, you know, I, I did speak to you earlier and yeah. you I saw what you've written uh, and we have the graphics out there about what assets are 
and you'll see them that they're intangible assets. Uh, what is it? Give me an example. So intangible assets are something which is the goodwill of a company that it has actually earned over a period of time okay. or the IPR. So it actually mm. depends on what industry you will you mm. are in. So the brand. Yes, the brand okay. and everything. Mm. And the tangible assets mm. will obviously be the cash or the bank accounts that mm. you have and the accounts receivable, which is basically uh, anything which can be of economic value and which mm. you actually deploy in terms to actually... So suppose uh, I go and buy a company which is essentially driven by human resources, right? And there's a value given to those human resources. Is that tangible, intangible? What is it? See, honestly speaking, human resources we don't consider as an asset. asset though, at all. Okay. Yeah, because uh. though, as you rightly pointed mm. out, it should be an asset because those are the people who are actually doing it. So the valuation asset. differential will be put in as yes. goodwill? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, um, give a little detail. You did mention those. Yes. So mm. one thing I just wanted to point it out with respect to the assets is that it does not depend on then who owns that asset. Mm. So, for instance, as I go back to my same example, of mm. a housing loan so I did buy an asset and there can be a possibility that for instance it would have been 100% financially uh, mm. leased but it doesn't happen in our scenarios mm. these days but in that case I'm not putting in my money to buy an asset mm. it's somebody else or the loan or the investor who's so putting in that money. So technically the bank owns it. Yes. But you control it. But I you control it. it. So yeah. what is more important is the controlling power that I have and the possession mm. that I have is actually which makes it from a financial statement an asset and it actually mm. sits on the asset side of the balance mm. sheet. Okay. All right. So and there are other things that you pointed out that uh, uh, we have them on your screen and you can look at them uh, as we speak and there are the things like account receivables now yes so accounts receivable is something like the people who actually owe us money in terms mm. of that we are yet to collect that money but we haven't collected it but there mm. is a surety that the money would come in mm. so that's also as an asset so just like we give our suppliers some of the credit period mm. we also do enjoy because of our credibility mm. some mm. of the credit period by our people so that's right. the money that we get mm. in mm. And then we also have, so in a simple example, uh, then the investments that we make, apart mm. from the operations that we obviously run to run a business, there are investments that we make. Mm. And that investments will also be accountable as an mm. asset. So basically, whatever money that you actually get and you deploy that money to any use or economic mm. value to gain mm. value to a business would actually mm. be considered as an asset. Sometimes um, we see inventory. Now, uh, inventory, if it is unsold, is still an asset on the... Oh, yes. So if it is sold, it is not an asset. But yes, ah. if it is an unsold inventory, mm. that's obviously an asset. So the as when the inventory is sold and the money comes in, it will go into the cash part yes. of the equity yes. side so or the earnings part. Yes. And obviously. the inventory would be, how is it valued? So it, it's basically, uh, there's a valuation matrix to it. So basically it's actually cost to market price, whichever is mm. lower. So that's a separate. Okay, uh, we, could, we could do get you back on value yeah. and all, all that FIFO, LIFO, yeah, is that yeah, in so All that is technical jargon. Okay. So. First in, first out, yes. last in, last yes. out. All right. We are going to ask you to give us more details about that later on. All right. Liabilities. Okay. Liabilities, um, if I just have to say it's in a normal uh, scenario, it's like your credit card payment. So okay. all mm. the money that you actually owe to people, the money mm. that you need to give to people is mm. your liability. So all your telephone bills which you actually get to pay later. So from mm. company's perspective, your liabilities can be long term depending mm. on the loan that you've taken mm. and also the short term basically on the kind of loans again. So again, uh, the current... And also the bills that you have to pay. The bills that you have to pay. Okay. So uh, essentially speaking, it would be actually the account payables, the taxes that you need to pay. So mm. again, as I said in the debtors, mm. the mm. money that uh, that you need to pay and you actually get some credit period to pay that money, mm. but in your balance sheet, you need to show that it's still payable from mm. your perspective. So that's why you show it as liabilities. So essentially speaking, that's the money that you actually owe mm. to the others, which goes and sits, mm. which is okay. the third party money. The final part of that is, of course, uh, the equity part. We spoke about assets, we spoke about... What's the difference between shareholders' equity and owners' equity? Is it uh, no? These the are same the thing? technical. Yeah, it's almost the same thing. It's just the mm. owners' equity is something that the owner puts in the money, but the shareholders' equity can also be uh, the, the other people. Like if you go and buy a stock, so you mm. also become a shareholder of a company. So that mm. would essentially be a shareholders' equity, but that all be an, essentially speaking an equity. Mm. at the same time. Mm. So uh, equity is nothing but the money that an owner puts in mm. and can be taken out at some point in time. Mm. And if I reverse the equation, if in case of a situation, if I need to liquidate a company, all the assets, if I get to sell it, mm. I obviously need to have a liability to pay my third party people. Yeah. And once I pay that, whatever is left for me in, mm. the, in the last is what is actually the owner's equity. Mm. So that's how it is. And the but, the, but the cash accruals that come in, that I hold, come in the assets part. Yes. So, uh, sometimes we see that all the net uh, dividends, where would that come in? 
Yes, so I was just coming to that mm. point. So mm. at times, obviously, company is growing and company is making profit. So mm. there can be one situation where the company or the shareholders decide to distribute that money because that's where yeah. the yeah. shareholders mm. stake lies, you know, mm. in terms of to divide that mm. profit amongst them as dividends. But there can also be a call that they take because they see that there's a future potential in a company to grow that they actually mm. put that money back as equity mm. and which is essentially called retained earnings. So the earnings okay. which are retained. So that mm. also forms part of the owner's equity. Okay. The reason being it essentially belongs to them but they're just mm. pooling that money in mm. to invest in the company because they see the future potential. So they actually defer the dividend payment or something. So mm. that's the call that you can take. Okay, before I move on to, uh, you know, we are going to discuss about the fact that asset, the, the, this kind of a accounting system from the market's perspective, because the markets are always forward looking, tends to be a little backward looking. It tells to, tends to give you what has happened, but doesn't tell you what is, uh, some people argue that's not true because from looking at the debt and looking at the liability, looking at the investments, you can actually tell about what the market, uh, a company is going to do. Give us an example how you would read a balance sheet to be able to make an exa uh, uh, to make a prediction of what is wrong with the company. Right. So, uh, mm. just before I answer that question, mm. I just want to say like when we talk about assets, uh, the liabilities, the balance sheets, so it all has to balance out. It's a give mm. and take relationship. Mm. I mean, in olden days, we used to have a barter system. Like, right. you know, it's like we, mm. even if the owner is putting that money into the uh, company, it's obviously mm. they're expecting that the company would give them something in return. Yeah. So, I mean, in fact, there are a lot of times when the people ask why the balance sheet needs to balance. So the reason being, yeah. I'll just take a simple example that if you go to a coffee shop, mm. you actually buy a coffee. Mm. So, what you debit is coffee and what you mm. credit is actually the money that you pay to a coffee right. shop yeah. or mm. for instance if you go for a jog what you mm. debit is the health benefit and what mm. you actually credit is the time. Mm. So I'm saying the two sides of a coin so every situation obviously there's an action that has to be a reverse reaction. Mm. So whenever anybody's investing in the company they obviously mm. there's a potential there's a mm. scope to obviously earn. Mm. Having said that from a shareholders perspective and they're trying to value a company as you mm. rightly said the money that's come in mm. and it's been deployed to a certain extent there are certain investments that's already being done. Mm. And uh, so when we do all these ratios to value a company, at some point in time, we can actually see that whatever money that came into the company, whether it was deployed and whether the earnings that was earned, it was in excess of the cost of capital. Mm. Having said that, we do need to see what is the future of that company. Right. And there's a potential to see that from the growth assets of a company, that mm. what are the future investment that company needs to So grow. I'm going to come to that a little later. We'd, uh, I'm, go I'm going to yeah. in indulge me and stay for four more minutes uh, I just before we come to that final point I just wanted to know that when you look at it you know one of the arguments often made against accrual accounting is that when you have uh, uh, when you buy a company you get goodwill onto your books and this same thing that you do doesn't show up at all because it's not marked to market often is that a problem no, re not really. So when you value a company, you actually mm. value a company in terms of uh, what the company is doing in terms of, you know, I mean, there are a lot of factors involved when you value a company. Mm. It's not just whatever is there on the balance sheet, honestly speaking. It's much yeah, more you need yeah. to read through mm. the balance sheet to understand that. Mm. And what you need to see that what are the future projections of a company mm. is. I'm talking so, about book value itself because you essentially, you're, you're, let's say you're making cables. And all your assets are at uh, you know at the price that you bought. Then you go and acquire a cable making company to advance it, mm -hmm. and you paid an extra. The difference between the book value is added onto your books as goodwill, right? Yes. And suddenly so it. Uh, see, that's because you actually earned that. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, when you do, in fact, one of the ratios actually takes the book value and actually mm -hmm. it compares it against the earning. The reason being that the money that was given to it, given mm -hmm. to you was at a certain book value and what mm -hmm. you actually did that with that money to earn mm -hmm. that earnings on it. Okay. So, in fact, one of the ratios, which is uh, return on capital, is yeah. actually the earnings over the book value mm -hmm. of the shareholder's mm -hmm. equity. It's a this is just a teaser. For our viewers, I want to tell you that this is a teaser. We're doing this entire series. <laughs> And you will hear about these return ratios and Ritika will be here with us. The final uh, thing that we want to discuss as we are saying back, there is Ashwat Damodaran talks about, you know, looking mm. at uh, the financial balance sheet, right. which he calls, which is looking at growth assets and assets in hand. Just take us through a little bit of that and then we, that's going to be the next show though. Yeah, sure. Mm. So, as I was talking, so again, I mean, we mm. talked about equity, we talked about liabilities, but the asset side can also, there's another angle to it, which actually can be seen as a investment that has already taken place at the point in time that we were new valuing a company mm. and the growth assets. So, mm. by growth assets, we would mean something like a shares or something mm. the 
so basically which has a potential to run excess returns more mm. than the cost of capital okay so that's where i think there's a main uh, angle to it in terms of valuation that we need mm. to understand the, what's the future projections of a company mm. so if i just take an example of an e-commerce i mean that's mm. the rage these days mm. uh, all the e-commerce companies obviously has got a uh, investments coming in and yes as mm -hmm. absolutely that's mm -hmm. what I was coming at only growth assets in a mm -hmm. way and these being companies are valued at amazing valuations mm -hmm. so what is it that actually the investors or anybody who's valuing those companies are looking at they're actually looking at the growth potential of that company and mm -hmm. the expectation is that the earnings would at some point in point of time would be much much more than the cost of the capital that they're putting in now mm -hmm. so that's where I think we it's, mm -hmm. it's very important to see that what is the growth potential of the company apart mm -hmm. from that what is the company has been done so far mm -hmm. in fact all these valuation models do take these projections into mm -hmm. play when they're valuing a company all right Ritika thank you for coming in we're going to focus thank on you. this uh, financial balance sheet because it is perhaps a more uh, uh, useful metric to uh, useful kind of thing to look for in the markets we are also going to uh, get you back to give us a little bit of idea about indads because yeah. that's really c c created a lot of confusion in the markets in terms of predicting quarterly earnings right. and i think it's going to continue for the next three quarters so we should uh, look at it as well thanks a lot Thank ritika so pleasure much having you here